These are some conceptual questions about the topics of relative velocity and one-dimensional kinematics, um, which we often think of as the uh, constant acceleration, constant velocity problems. Um, <clears throat> so we'll cover uh, sort of three sets of questions, uh, the first on relative velocity, the second on a couple of basic kinematics concepts, which overlaps with our definitions of kinematics from the prior lectures. Um, and then we'll do a couple of one-dimensional motion problems, uh, meaning constant velocity, constant acceleration. And just to remind you a couple things, um, it's good if you can uh, chat about these questions with someone else. So I'll, I'll quickly show you the questions. You can pause the video um, and try and answer them, but it would be good if you could have a discussion with somebody else after you've come up with an answer. Uh, and the other thing is they're called conceptual questions, but they're just based on... Um, the definitions that we've already learned. So it's not like it's a completely separate subject matter, it's just a more qualitative application of the definitions that we've learned. So be sure that you're taking um, some physical principle or some physical law or some definition and using that in order to answer the question. So first a few questions uh, using relative velocity. Uh, here's one. Here's a second. And I think that's it. So let's take a look at this one. So um, you're driving west on I-96 towards Muskegon at 75 miles per hour. It's a beautiful day. A car drives across the overpass above you going 40 miles per hour. Um, I guess we should say, I didn't say, that's too bad. Uh, oh, going south uh, at 40 miles per hour. What's the direction of the car's velocity with respect to you? So let's, let's draw a picture of it first. Um, so we have uh, I-96 um, like this, and you're driving west on I-96. So let's give you... Uh, your velocity vector. So remember with relative velocity you want to name the vectors um, with respect to the objects from which they're taken. So if we're told that you're driving 75 miles per hour we know now that that means uh, that that's the magnitude of the velocity of u relative to the road. So we should write this as v u road like that. Um, now there's an overpass um, so let's draw the overpass. And there's a car there um, which is driving south. So they should have a velocity vector that looks like this. And they're going 40 miles per hour, so I should have drawn their vector a little bit shorter. And that's the velocity of um, them. So what should we say? Car car relative to the road there. Now, um, we know, we're, we're asked, what's the velocity of the car's velocity re relative to you? Um, and we know that with relative velocity problems, we start with this equation that we know to be true, which is um, VAC vector is equal to VAB plus VBC. And then we make assignments um, of those objects. So if we're looking for car's velocity relative to you, then let's make that the left-hand side. So that's car relative to you. So I've set A to C, uh, C to U, and therefore this is gonna be car relative to the other thing, well that must be the road, plus the velocity of then the road relative to you, making the assignments. Um, now this is a true equation. It's not quite uh, helpful yet because it has this weird vector, the velocity of the road relative to u, whereas we were given u relative to the road. So let us rework that. So this is car relative to the road minus u relative to the road. Remember, uh, if the road is going backwards as you're driving, then you're going forwards with respect to the road. So it's just a minus sign 
when you switch these indices like that. Um, okay, so now we have a, a, a good equation, um, and then we just could do it graphically. So if we want to find uh, car relative to u, then we take car relative to the road and we add to it the minus u relative to the road. So let's do that. So we have We have car relative to the road, which goes like this. And then u relative to the road looks like this. So this is minus u relative to the road, like that. So I draw this vector here. Um, and I guess I should continue to draw it a little bit longer here. So this is the minus u relative to the road vector, and therefore the resultant looks like this, and that is a car relative to u. Do we do have all that correctly? Okay, so um, what would that be? Well, that's in the southeast quadrant, so we would get southeast for the result. Um, does it make sense uh, that that's the way it's going? Well, I think so. So as you're driving along here, a car goes across the overpass and it's going south relative to you. So, so that's the south part of this vector. So why is it going east as well? Well, that's backwards relative to you. So as you drive past this overpass, you'll see the car going backwards relative to you. So that's why it looks like that. Next question. You're wandering through the woods, come upon a river moving one meter per second, and it's 50 meters wide. You know you can swim at two meters per second. Which direction should you point to get across fastest? Uh, it looks like I didn't give the direction of the river here. So let's say that um, uh, direction north is directly across. So let's say the river is going east. So let's draw a little picture of it. Um, so here's the banks of the river, here's the river itself, you're standing here, and the river has a velocity which is going east, so let's draw that, and we're told that it's one meter per second, so that's relative to the shore, so this is the velocity of the river relative to the shore. Um, you can swim faster than the river. So you're going to have, once you jump in the water, you're going to have a larger velocity, which is the velocity of u relative to the river. Uh, remember, the, the speed at which you swim is measured relative to the water around you. Um, now, the question is, what direction should you point to get across the fastest? Well, getting across the river means u moving relative to the shore. So we should first take a look at what that equation is. So using relative velocity, VAC is equal to VAB plus VBC. Um, and then let's look at U relative to the shore because that's what it means to get across, U to go from shore to shore. Um, so assigning A to U and C to shore, then we get the velocity of U relative to the river plus the velocity of the river relative to the shore. So the velocity of u relative to the shore is just the sum of these two vectors here. Uh, okay, so how do we figure out how to get across fastest? Well, getting across means to go in the direction perpendicular to the river. Uh, we could call that the y direction. So what we're really interested in is uh, u moving a delta y um, in order to get across a delta y of, I guess, 50 meters. So where is that going to appear, the delta y? Well, it's going to appear in this vector here. So u shore is equal to u shore x comma u shore y. And, what, and then this thing here, it's a constant velocity, so it actually means delta y over delta t. So we could write down finally that u shore y is equal to delta y over delta t. 
And if we plug in d for delta y, then this is the equation that's going to tell us the amount of time, which will be d over u sure y. So the amount of time it takes to get across is the distance that you're going to be uh, traveling divided by the speed in the direction in which you're going, in that y direction. Sorry, I shouldn't say in the direction which you're going because you're also going to be dragged downstream, but in the, uh, the component of the velocity in the direction that you want to go. So what you see here is that the x component of your velocity doesn't matter at all for the travel across the river. It's only the y component of the velocity that determines the amount of time. So if you want to get the shortest amount of time, how do you get across fastest? Then you want to make this denominator largest. d can't be changed. That's the distance across the river. So how do you make the denominator largest? Well, you want to maximize the y component. You want to maximize the y component of v u shore. And the way to do that is to, to go exactly in this direction. So if I add this vector to this vector, then I'll get some y component, which is exactly equal to vy river, u with respect to the river. Whereas if I point in another direction, so maybe I might point my velocity with respect to the river sort of in the direction that I'm flowing. Well, then I might get a larger magnitude of my velocity relative to the shore, but you notice that its y component is going to be smaller. And if its y component is smaller here, then that means its y component is going to be smaller here, and that means delta t is going to be larger. It's going to take more time. So uh, that might have been obvious from the beginning that if you want to get across the river fastest, you should point yourself across the river. But this is how you show that with relative velocity. So the answer is you want to be pointing yourself north. That's the direction of pointing your velocity re relative to the river. OK, now we'll do two um, problems of uh, kinematics. So these are just sort of general kinematics questions. Number one. Number two. So a car and a truck get on the highway. Each accelerates with constant acceleration. The car reaches 60 miles per hour while the truck reaches 70 miles per hour, which has the greater acceleration. Well, let's look at our definition of acceleration. Um, so acceleration, the definition of the average acceleration is equal to the change in velocity vector over the change in time which means that if you take two moments in time, it's going to be the final velocity vector minus the initial velocity vector divided by that time interval, t final minus t initial. Um, if you're getting onto a highway, it looks like one-dimensional motion, so you might just think about this as the x component. So the x component of the acceleration is just going to be v final x minus v initial x over t final minus t initial just look at it in one dimension. So how do we answer the question? Well, we're told that the car has a final velocity of six, 60 miles per hour, that's here, and the truck has a final velocity of 70, and I guess we can assume that they start with zero. So the numerator of this thing is going to be larger for the truck than it is for the car. So do we say that the truck's acceleration is larger? No, we can't because we have a denominator here as well, which is the amount of time it took each of them to reach that final velocity. And we were not told that they have exactly the same amount of time. In fact, we weren't told anything about the amount of time that it takes to reach that speed. And of course, that was purposeful. So they're trying to trick you. So um, because we don't know anything about the amount of time, we don't know anything about the acceleration. We know what that numerator is, but we don't know the denominator. So we don't know the value. So the answer is, it's impossible to tell. You're driving towards a red light. What's the direction of your acceleration vector? So I guess this problem requires that you are a good driver in 
some sense. So here's a red light. Here's your car. Um, and let's try and draw some some velocity and acceleration vectors. Well, if you're driving towards the red light, then that means your velocity points towards the red light. So we know that the velocity of u with respect to the road looks like that. Now, what's the rest of the question? Well, if you're driving towards a red light, it should be that you are slowing down. So if this is your initial velocity vector, then a moment later, some delta t later, your final velocity vector should be smaller, right? You are slowing down, so the magnitude of your velocity is getting smaller and smaller. So what does that mean about acceleration? Well, the answer is it should be pointing backwards. Now, why is it that it should be pointing backwards? Well, that's because the definition of average acceleration is delta v over delta t. So the direction of average acceleration is the same as the direction of delta v. So what does delta v mean? Well, delta v is equal to v final minus v initial. Or you could write that as v final is equal to v initial plus delta v. And remember, same direction as the acceleration. So if you know what your final and initial velocities are supposed to be, as they are when you're going towards a red light, magnitude should be getting smaller, then that means you know what the delta v should look like because you know how to do vector addition. And if you know what delta v looks like, then you know what the acceleration looks like. Um, so is what does this look like? Well, it agrees exactly with the picture that I've drawn up above because we have um, an initial velocity vector that points like this with some large magnitude. We have a resultant here, which is shorter. So let's just draw it off to the side. That's our v final. And we want to add to that a delta v that gives us that as the resultant. So the delta v should look like this. Delta v vector must look like that. So in order to get a shorter velocity vector after an interval of time, then the delta v should be pointing opposite to the initial. And that means the acceleration vector should be pointing backwards here. So there's sort of a general, well, let's answer the question. So um, the acceleration should be pointing away from the light, back towards you. Um, if the acceleration was pointing towards the light, then that would give you a delta v that points forwards. And you can see if you added a delta v, you'd get a larger final velocity. Since we're in Michigan, maybe that's actually true for you. That's what people do. They just speed up and speed up until they have to stop. But that's not what the question assumes. Um, perpendicular to direction of travel, what would that mean? Well, you would put a delta v here, perpendicular, and then your final velocity would be like that. So that would mean like you're turning, right? Your, your, your final velocity is now pointing in a different direction. Um, but we don't assume that you're going to turn as you're getting towards the red light. And if the acceleration vector is 0, then that's delta v is equal to 0, and the final would be the same as the initial. Well, again, if you're a bad driver, maybe that's true, because why bother stopping until you're actually underneath the light? Um, but that's not what was assumed in the question. So um, this is why the answer is what it is. It comes directly out of the definition. But there's some key concepts that we can remember here. Um, so slowing down it means that acceleration is opposite to the velocity vector. And because you're going to be decreasing the magnitude of the velocity if you do that. You notice I could have drawn the red light over here um, and had the car with an opposite velocity vector and everything would have remained the same even though maybe the x components would be negative in the other case. Um, this is a statement that's made without respect to components. The acceleration points opposite to the velocity. And we didn't say this explicitly, but the word speeding up, the phrase speeding up, what do you think that means? Well, it means the acceleration is parallel 
to the velocity, meaning same direction. And we, we hinted at the fact that if you add a delta v here, then you'll get a v final, which is larger in magnitude than the initial, and that means that you're speeding up. So those are nice concepts to know, but of course it's also important to know where they come from, which is just our definition of acceleration. So now a few questions um, about one-dimensional kinematics. So these are the constant velocity or constant acceleration equations. Uh, here's one. And here's two. I guess there's only two questions. Okay. Um, so you're driving along a road, you see a deer up ahead, you slam on your brakes and you stop after 100 meters, hopefully you stop before the deer. Um, now assuming the acceleration is the same, how far would you slide if you've been going half as fast? So uh, let's draw a picture. Remember that's our starting point almost always. So here's your car um, and we want to identify all the key things. So um, there's a deer, I guess that's important. Oh dear, poor deer has some problem with its legs. I don't know how the deer's legs look. Um, and you're driving on the road and you have some initial velocity, which obviously points towards the deer. So let's call that um, V0, your initial velocity vector. Um, and it has some value, it has some magnitude, so we could just label the vector with its magnitude then. Um, and then at this moment, uh, you decide to slam on your brakes, and therefore your acceleration vector, because you're gonna be slowing down, should be pointing backwards. And the value of that acceleration, the magnitude of that acceleration is uh, independent of how fast you were going, it just has to do with uh, your car and your tires and the connection to the road, for example. Um, whereas the velocity vector, um, its magnitude might be changing in this problem. That's what our question is about. And then the last thing that we might show is that we have a distance, um, which is the stopping distance, so d stop. And we were told that for this particular case, um, oops, not 100 meters per second, just 100 meters, that the stopping distance was 100 meters. Um, I don't know if we need it yet, but let's make a coordinate system. So just to emphasize that we're moving only along the x direction, notice that the distance is along the x direction, both velocity vectors point in the positive or the negative x direction. So we can completely exclude the y direction, just talk about one dimensional motion. Now, what kind of motion are we talking about? Well, it was given to us. There's going to be an acceleration that changes your velocity from something to zero. So at this point, maybe I should have drawn that. So V final is equal to zero here. That's what we mean by the stopping distance. Um, okay, so what can we do? Well, what were we given? We were given that there's some acceleration, that that remains constant. We were given the stopping distance, and we were told that you have some initial velocity, but we weren't told what it was. What were we not given? Well, we weren't given anything about time, so there was no time involved. So we're asked a question about constant acceleration, but we were given nothing about time. So this might be a good moment to look at your equations for constant acceleration and notice that you have, well, um, let's look at them. Uh, ax at t is equal to a0x, uh, vx at any time is equal to v0x plus a0xt, and x is equal to x0 plus v0xt plus one half axt squared. Um, each of these involve time, but remember there was a fourth equation that we derived uh, from these two, which was um, v zero, sorry, vx squared 
minus v0x squared is equal to 2 a0x x minus x final. So it's a relationship between the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the initial and final position using the acceleration. And that seems like a good equation here. So let's try and relate the quantities that we have in the problem using this equation. So what do we have? Well, I'm just going to rewrite the equation. Always good to write the basic equation first. So um, and let's state how we're going to apply it. So from point A to point B, meaning from here to the stopping here, just to be clear about what we mean by initial and final. Um, so vx, that means vx of t, the final velocity, well, we know that that is 0 because we're stopping. So we can plug in 0 for that. 0 squared is 0. The initial velocity in the x direction, well, I chose my x direction to point rightward, so the x component of this vector is positive, and its component is just equal to v0, the magnitude of it. So I can write that as v0 squared. Notice I've replaced the component, the x part, in terms of the magnitude. And we'll be doing that all the time. Um, then we have the x component of the acceleration. Um, so we have 2 times the x component of the acceleration. Well, this is different. The acceleration vector points backwards. So if I were to place that on a coordinate system, it would have a negative x component. So its uh, x component is minus a. And then finally, I have x final. Well, that's this position right here. That's equal to d, or d stop, minus x initial. And I chose to put my coordinate system here. So that's equal to 0. So we have all that. Now we can make it pretty. Um, notice we have a negative sign on both sides. So we get v0 squared is equal to 2a d stop. Okay. So that's the relationship between the initial velocity, the stopping distance, and the acceleration. Now the question was, what's d stop in the second case? So um, we can do something called the um, proportional reasoning here. So this equation actually looks like uh, d stop is equal to v0 squared over 2a. So I can say d stop uh, new over d stop old is equal to v0 squared new over 2a, a remains the same, over v0 squared old over 2a. Now why do I do that? Well, the things that I don't know cancel out. So the accelerations cancel out there, and we're just left with v0 uh, squared new over v0 squared old. But we know exactly what um, those things are with respect to each other. So v0 squared new. Uh, I can put the squared outside, and that is uh, v0 old divided by 2, and v0 old is just v0. So what do we get? We get um, 1 half squared. And what's 1 half squared? It's 1 quarter. So the distance that you would be, that you would slide if you went half as fast is not going to be half the distance. It's going to be a quarter of the distance, which is 25 meters. So this method of proportional reasoning, um, the method involves first using the physical principle, getting some true relationship between the quantities of interest, and then recognizing that you can take a ratio to cancel out things that you don't know the value of, but that you might know are the same. So we were able to do that with the acceleration here. And then the fact that d is proportional to v squared is what gave us the answer. Um, you can write the new velocity in terms of the old velocity based on what was given in the problem. So that's a really nice technique to have. Final question. Driving along the road, you see a deer. You slam on your brakes. You stop after 100 meters. If the roads were icy, such that your acceleration were cut in half, how far would you slide? 
So this is basically the same question as last time. It's just that the conditions were are, are different. So now we're saying what happens if the acceleration changes? And I guess implicitly, um, your initial speed remains the same. So let's just copy over the result that we had, which was uh, v0 squared is equal to 2a d stop. So v0 is equal to 2a d stop. So our, our setup is exactly the same as the last time. And again, we're looking for d stop. So d stop is equal to v0 squared over 2a. And again, we want to compare one situation to another. So we can say d stop new over d stop old. And then I just take the ratio of the right-hand sides here. So this is going to be uh, v0 new squared over 2 times a new divided by v0 old squared divided by 2 a old. Maybe we can write that out a little bit more clearly. So this is v new squared. Well, that's, um, that's unchanged. So it's just some v0 squared over 2a nu. Um, well, we were told to cut the acceleration in half. So that's going to be a divided by 2. And then divide by a fraction means to multiply by its inverse. So this is going to be 2a old. That's what we just called a. And divided by v0 squared old. Um, that's just v0. So what do we get? Well, the v0 squareds cancel out. The a's cancel out. And we're left with 2 over 2 over 2, 1, which is 2. So what does that mean? d stop over d old is twice. You could rewrite that equation. I don't think I did that last time. But you could write that equation now as d new is equal to 2 times d old. So the first time you stopped in 100 meters, if the acceleration is cut in half, then you're going to stop in twice that distance. So that means none of these are correct. The answer is 200 meters. Oh dear. Sorry, didn't give you a correct answer to use. Let's just make sure that that's true. The roads are icy. Your acceleration goes down. You're not able to stop as quickly. So your acceleration gets cut in half. So that means you slide further. Makes sense. None of these answers were allowed. Sorry about that. All right. See you next time.